I'm Jonathan Crane, the Tropical Fruit Crop Specialist with the University of Florida, and this is Dr. Wanda Montes, a Senior Biological Scientist with the University of Florida. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the proper way to take a sample to detect the disease that causes laurel wilt. And so we're going to talk about that today and we're going to demonstrate it. You're going to need some equipment to properly do this. First thing is you need to get some plastic bags, some markers, flagging tape is good to mark the tree that you are going to sample. Uh, you're going to need an implement to sample the wood. You can either use a hatchet or a small saw. Of course, you're going to want to have gloves. This is a bottle with disinfectant in it to disinfect your tools between samples. Okay, so now you have your sampling kit together. And I want to talk a little bit about how important it is to be out scouting your groves, looking for trees that are showing signs of stress, whether that's disease or insect stress, in this case, disease stress, uh, and possibly the insect stress. Some of the earliest symptoms are wilting of the leaves, hence the name laurel wilt. Very common, these are some of the early symptoms where you see the leaves losing their turgidity, becoming very limp and wilted. And then eventually uh, the leaves will dry out and hang up into the tree, hang on to the tree. And they'll turn brown and they will just hang there on the stems. So after you identify a tree that is showing signs of wilting and perhaps dead leaves hanging on the, on the uh, stems, you want to get up close to the bark of the wood and in this case, is you, you may, some trees may show a few uh, holes or evidence of beetles boring into the wood. And here I'm pointing to several areas where you can see there's a little bit of sawdust. And uh, this provides evidence that there is some type of insect or beetle boring into this wood. And the reason you want to look for this is, is this is probably a good area to sample the sapwood because there is evidence of the beetle. However, not every tree is necessarily gonna show clear evidence of beetles uh, boring into the tree. And that's because of weathering and rainfall and things like that may uh, knock off uh, the sawdust evidence uh, of beetles boring into the tree. So I usually just go ahead and inspect the, the limbs or the trunks that are right underneath where the symptomatic leaves are up above and look to see if I can see any evidence of boring into the tree. But again, this would be an area to sample because it is underneath where there is symptomatic tissue above. In some cases, when you approach some trees, you're gonna see a lot of evidence of beetle boring. Uh, this is what we call little toothpicks or wood straws. And this is from the beetle boring into the wood and the uh, sawdust coming out. You'll also notice there's a lot of sawdust all over this bark and you see little holes, you see little evidence where there's sawdust built up. And this is where beetles have been boring into the tree. And this is uh, the ideal place to sample uh, for laurel wilt. As I mentioned before, uh, you need to identify the sample. So on the sample bag, I would suggest putting the name laurel wilt so we know it's a laurel wilt sample, the date you took the sample, the name of the grove, the location of the tree, the variety, if you know the variety, your, your email address, and your name. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the bark because we have to take samples from the sap wood. In other words, the wood just underneath the bark. So the first thing is I need to remove the bark. Please note, this is still bark. This orange color or this pink color, that is still bark. That's not wood. Okay. So now I'm still removing bark. This is bark. And now we're getting to the sapwood. And notice there's some streaking in the sapwood. In other words, those brown streaks. Okay, so I'm going to remove some more of the bark so we can see more of it. 
But you see how big the bark is, how deep it is. It's got an orange or pinkish color and you need to remove that. That's not part of the sample. So what I'm doing now is removing some of this sapwood that has the staining. And sometimes it has much more severe straining, staining. And sometimes you'll actually see evidence of uh, beetle infestation. But in this case, we're seeing a little bit of staining. But I'm going to keep sampling. Again, you see, we want this sapwood sample. And it's like I said, we don't want the, uh, the bark, so I'll remove the bark off of this piece. So, but again, we're looking for these wood chips. And, uh, you know, you need at least five or six good pieces. Many times I will sample more than one place on the tree. So I may sample another limb that's also showing symptoms. So here I'm, I'm uh, using the hatchet to get through the bark, but you'll notice, see all these holes? These are holes of boring beetles or ambrosia beetles. And we're still not through the bark yet. Okay, now we're starting to get through the bark. And you're going to see wood that has brown streaks in it. And this is the, the type of wood that we want for our sample. This is exactly the type of wood, you see the streaking, the brown streaks. This is the type of wood that should be sampled for laurel wilt. And you're going to want to take at least four or five chips like this for your sample. I'm going to demonstrate taking a sample with a small saw. And the idea will be to take a wedge, a shallow wedge, which includes some of the sapwood. So here's evidence of beetle boring near the base here. It's a little hard for me to get right into the base, so I'm going to go a little bit uh, outside of it. But you want to go ahead and make a relatively shallow cut, but enough into the sapwood. So this is just a, a shallow wedge, and the idea is that uh, you want to get it, you will, this does include some bark and everything else, but the pathologist can sample and get some of the sapwood, which is this outer part, for their sample. And so that's the idea with this little wedge cut. So again, look for an area where it's showing some signs of uh, beetle infestation. And uh, Here again, you can see there's a lot of bark. This is all bark out here, out here. And it's this tissue they'll sample right between the bark and the, uh, and the wood. This is the sapwood.
After taking your sample, and I usually sample from more than two places on the tree, you want to go ahead and take your disinfectant, and you can set the sample down, your disinfectant, and disinfect your implement so that there's no chance of you spreading it to another tree or even to the same, yeah, to another tree by your sampling. We also recommend that you cover the wound with a fibered roofing tar, and it should say fibered roofing tar. And this is because we found that the beetles cannot penetrate through that tar and beetles can't bore out of that tar. If you just use a latex paint, the beetles can bore through the tar or bore out through the tar. Last thing, or first thing, after you've taken a sample, is remember to tag the tree. I would suggest tagging it with the location of the tree and the date that you took the uh, sample.